Good afternoon ladies, it's Kay here in Taunton on this not too bad day I guess apart from it being very cold. Um, an update on the Book of Tricks card, I'm delighted to say my um, film crew have chosen a winner to take the little mini giveaway and it's Dwillis Richardson over there in New Zealand. So Dwellis, that will be very shortly on its way to you and I hope it travels well. I've got everything crossed. To everyone who participated, I would like to thank you very, very much indeed. It was lovely to hear from you all. I do, however, need a couple of addresses, please, if that's okay with you all. Caroline Withington, please. Marina, Geordie Angel and UK Dolly D Donna. Um, it's, it's just really that I would, I would like to, over a given period of time, send a little something out to you all to say thank you for taking part. It is very, very much appreciated. It's the first time I've done anything of that nature on here and had it been left to me, I wouldn't have been able to choose a winner because several of you really, really, really touched me with your comments, with your reasoning and for me it was impossible to choose. I just got to the point where I was saying, right, I'm going to send something to everyone and that's not the point of, of these little giveaways and therefore I asked. Gary, my partner, if he would very kindly choose, and he sat and read through everything on my under the video on my page and decided that Dwellis was who he would like the car to go to. So once again, congratulations, Dwellis. Having dealt with that, I thought with the response you might like a not a complete tutorial because it's quite a, a business to make one of those cards, but a notion of how to do it and the materials that you need. Um, bearing in mind, ladies, please, that I have been a crafter for more years than I care to remember. I have collected, hoarded, and generally built up a stash over the years. So what you see me using has not been purchased in any recent months apart from the embossilicious butterfly folder all the rest i've accrued over many many years um, and i am very fortunate to be in the place where i have these things to hand unfortunately with the book of tricks i don't really know any shortcuts apart from um if you would like to PM me and I will give you my address and you could send an A4 self-addressed envelope to me with stamps and everything on it um, and I will quite happily send out the three pages it takes to make the book which you could use as templates and then decorate up as you wish. Um, but I will leave that entirely up to you. For the people that have the boards, hopefully I will be able to give you a couple of helpful tips in this little thick tutorial to, that will help you get back into the board if it's something that you feel you would like to do. Hence why I'm sat here rolling my rolling pin because believe it or not this is one of my key ingredients for making the book of tricks <laughs> and every home should have one. If not for beating up on the husband or partner then for making the book of tricks. So we'll put that one there for the moment. Um, the Book of Tricks is actually by the Glitter Girls, who have, I think probably have their time. It's Keepsake Cards and Crafts. This one came out in 2004. Um, and I, I hope you can see it very clearly on screen. It is literally a board that's got indents in it. There are four main indents and then a center indent with these guider lines. And there are also little lips here in, in strategically placed on the board that hold an A4 piece of card in the right place 
for you to be able to use the scorer which is recommended for use not the little dingly dangly bit on the back but it actually this is of a size if you look there are, I'm sure all of you know several variations and sizes on the market but this particular one with the champagne bubbles in it as I call it is designed to fit beautifully into the indents which allows you then to slide quite nicely along all the lines on the board through card um, it does work it does work it, undoubtedly uh, smaller styluses tend to slip in the grooves or go through the card um, and larger ones obviously you, you just wouldn't get the indent out at all so this is the board it's a double-sided affair on the other side there are bells flowers leaves little gift tags um, and other bits and pieces that you can use to, to decorate the, the book of tricks with. This is what primarily all these things were meant to do. But us crafters do take things further and do what we like to do with our, our cards and so on. So that is a take it or leave it scenario really. The main bit for me is the front of the board. Um, the other things I used for the card are these spellbinder nest abilities and it's templates for floral ovals and I just used if you look again there are there are three four dies I just used oh, did I know yes I did I just used the second size to make the oval that I then put the picture into to make it more decorative. Uh, the other thing that I talked about was the embossilicious, which is here, the butterflies, which is absolutely stunning. Um, these can be inked with all your distressed inks and so on. You can put them through your cattle bug, big shot, <coughs> excuse me, ground calibre on an A4 sheet and it will print out that design so these are actually multifunctional. I think you could probably also put a skim of modelling paste over them <coughs> or at least press them into modelling paste on a canvas and that would allow you to put the, the design as is onto a canvas. So whilst they're a little bit expensive they, they probably start out anywhere between 10 and 12 pounds each because it's an a4 size it's brilliant so that's that one you'll have to excuse me i've got a tickle i'll have a slurp of my coffee that will save you all having to listen to me the other thing you need is some double-sided foam tape this I usually buy from the cheap shops. They usually come in a pack of two or three, um, sticky next to each other, and then you just peel off the backing here. Sorry if I'm teaching you to suck eggs, but there perhaps are people that haven't encountered double-sided tape. Then a good pair of scissors. I use these because they've got one very sharp edge and then a, a smoother edge for working with. And that really, apart from your card stock, is all you need to get started. Now I've actually um, got a piece of just plain card here and I'm going to place it on the board. When you first start off with this, I think it's, it's quite crucial that you um, use a full sheet of card as you get wise to the event and you understand what's expected of you then it's easier and you can save a little bit of card on it but you're looking at three maybe four sheets of a4 card to start you off and literally all you do is put your card within all the relative spacers and then with your uh, embossing tool if you first score down the three central lines if you should slip off the board or 
make a bit of a mistake or get disturbed and have to come back to it again, those are your guidelines to pick up on. There are also lines coming in from the sides and again you just find them and score them so that the centre of your card is perfectly lined up. You then, and sometimes I cheat a little bit, but when you get used to it, these centre lines do actually indicate where the lines for the, for the size of sheet that you're doing start out from. So starting from the middle here, I'm just going to run the stylus. I don't know if you can actually pick this up with the camera and also keeping the shape that you're trying to achieve in your mind helps. Some people do put fabric softener sheet over the card just to make it easier for the stylus to glance over the card but personally I don't do that I, do, I just because it does affect how you then anchor all your pieces together so having done that I would go around it a couple of times and once you've got the outline set you can go around it as many times as you care to to get a really strong imprint if I show you on both sides I'm hoping the camera will pick up the, the lines now there are two schools of thought as to how best to cut the sheets out I personally work from the um, proud side the indent I find can lead you a little bit astray especially if you've got any visual impairment I'm currently waiting for a cataract operation so I'm struggling to say the least to, to get my lines straight and so on so if I if I feel the ridged area it keeps me on track and you literally do if I just start this out just cut on the outside of the indent you're not trying to cut through it you need that bevel edge there once you've cut everything out then you go to the bottom one now this is the the main cover is actually the only page in the book of tricks that has that very squared off edge here and that's purely logistical i think it's it's just to help the um card stand up and give a little bit of anchorage again the shaped bit at the bottom these little curves like legs afford the same kind of thing so if i continue up through to the top i'm guesstimating here a bit because the light isn't great for me but essentially you will see that rather than making your scissors do all the work you move your card as you cut and that's the same with any fuzzy cutting or decoupage cutting paper cutting that you need to do don't make your scissors do the work move the card to accommodate your scissors and that basically is the shape that you will end up with whoops for your the largest page in the book now i'm not the best cutter in the world but i have found if you then place that sheet back onto the board with the previous embossed line showing it is possible to go all the way around it again just to reinforce the lines that you want to be showing on the card if you're going to emboss them it's not essential because what actually happens is all of these lines get lost as you put them into um, anything like the emboss delicious folder because that in itself is an embossed thing and it, it just takes away all these lines but essentially 
that would be the first page. I don't know if you can still see the indents. You've got three lines down through the centre, which tells you exactly where the centre of your book is. Using the outside lines, you fold and make a very good crease on either side of that central middle line, if that makes sense, and I hope it does, because in doing so, that makes this lovely mm, spine, I lost my words then again, a lovely little spine for the beginnings of your book. Now, what I, the, the sizes I tend to use are the first, the second and the third from the outside in. I find the other ones are rather too small to do anything substantial with, particularly if you want to decorate, put an image on, put a photograph on or a verse, anything really. That clear space which amounts to I don't know what it is measurement wise but that clear space does give you ample space to decorate so if I show you one I prepared earlier you will see exactly what I mean and here I've gone ahead and done the three layers of the card so we have cream on the inside because this is um, how I perceive the book to be for my taste I then have mirror card which again is an A size, A4 size. Now mirror card comes in many many different qualities. This believe it or not is just um, from a pack for children really uh, that you find in a, in a lot of the stores like the range and, and, and places like that and it's the cheapest way bearing in mind that these sheets are to go nestle in between the area to decorate and the back of the card these these are not seen terribly much they're they're just there to enhance the overall look of of the book of tricks so there it is in all its glory so there's the first one that i just showed you how i cut it out then the second one and when you come to put it together properly, you just try and, and make sure that the space between top and bottom is the same because you're centralising and, and as in, in true books, you, you want your pages to look as if they are at home and they live where you've put them. And then the third layer, you do exactly the same with. So that is the very, very, very beginnings of putting your book together. This then is where your double-sided phone tape comes in. And what you do is place your phone tape. You don't put it on the larger of the sheets because that sheet is the carrier for your pages. So you just put a whole length down through the spine like so on the middle sheet and on the inside sheet and this then is where the rolling pin comes in because the idea of having the book is to make it look as though the book is open so what I tend to do is put all the pages it doesn't matter whether they're in the right place per se or not for the moment but you do want them in order and this is where the good old rolling pin comes in and to this by putting the layers together like this you actually stop the mirror card from creasing or becoming wrinkled unless that's a look that you're hoping to achieve so you just literally put the rolling pin into the little card tunnel and roll it and you end up if i if you can see this beveled edge this rather nice deeply beveled edge if you look at the side that's been done and the side that hasn't the difference is very very obvious 
So you then do the same on the other side. And already the book is starting to look like a book. So again, you just roll, hold it quite firmly and just chase the rowing pin around the inside, making a little tunnel. When you're happy with that, don't be afraid then to encourage it again, because you are in charge of the card, it's not in charge of you, to get this shape going so that it holds where you want it to be. Now, I haven't embossed these sheets, obviously, um, but there are other ways of decorating it, so it all works out well in the long run. Then you peel off the back of the first sheet. Again, line it up as best as you can. If you just try not to press too hard and only use the very edges of the page, once you've got it in the place that you want it to be, you can literally just run your finger up through the centre and that's anchored exactly where it needs to be. And the same with the smallest page. And again, you just slot it in. You can hold it any which way. If you want to pinch the two pages together like that, you can. It just depends on what suits you when you're working on these cards. But that is it, essentially. And there you have the three layers and they all come together and fit in beautifully. I tend, um, when I'm making these, to try and put a little something on each page, hence the cloth hearts, the embossed folders. Um, I've done wedding cards like this, anniversary cards. If there's a date involved, I tend to just print it out and put it onto the uh, mirror card so there's always a little feature going through the card i have used married people's photographs once they've been married for an an their first anniversary or some such or ruby wedding anniversaries um, i've done brand new babies and just decorated them to a specific for the request of the card but they are, as you can see, very, very effective, very, very versatile. You can stamp on them, you can put photographs on them, you can put an array of flowers on them, anything that you would choose to do, really. And your colour restrictions are basically down to your card stock, hence I me having gold and silver, I've got several other colours there as well. So if it were a wedding, I would do whites and silvers. If it's for a, a, a special birthday, a 16th or 21st, then I would find something appropriate. I try and find out from the people that request cards what and who the card is is all about. So if, if they have a favourite colour, like our dear Amanda, then it would be pink, because Amanda loves pink, scrimping mummy. If it were to be Fiona, Fiona Jennings 644, then it would be purple, because that's Fiona's special colour. Karen McClure, purple, that's her special colour. Lots of people like black. I've done some very nice black and white ones. It is entirely up to you what you put on your card and how you produce it. So I hope that's thankful, ladies. I'm not going to do anything more to this because, you know, it's, it's not required at the moment. And I hope that what I've shown you helps for those that have got the board and, and haven't perhaps done very much with it or given up. And for those of you who would like templates, then do PM me. The other thing for the box is yet another board. This is the Groovy board, and it is strictly a box maker. I know the um, there are several boards out there that, that make boxes. There, there are all manner of things out there, but this one I've had for about 
12 years, I would say. It's a bit grimy, but it still does its business. And this also scores cards to size. You've got all your A6 gatefold, gatefold, trifold, A6 standard, square, and A5 standard demarcations. And when you turn the board over, this side has got box space on it. And when you turn it around, this side has got your box lid on it. So I find it to be invaluable. Probably of all the things that I've purchased over the years, these two are the ones that I have used most and got most pleasure from. Um, I believe they're still all available. eBay is, is your place. Um, I think the American ladies have a much better scoreboard in their country. Um, is it the pro score or something like that? And, and there again, it's about knowing your sizes, knowing how much of a depth you need on your card. Because as you go down one side, you're making the size of your card. So that would be that way. And this makes the depth of the box. And as you turn it around and you score in exactly the same place, you are then coming up with an A4 base that goes towards making your box. If you would like um, me to show you how to make the boxes online, then please, again, leave a message for me and I will endeavour to coerce my film crew to set me up and get me running. But for today, <clears throat> we'll call it quits. And as I say, I hope that has helped you. One last thing for excellent quality card. <coughs> I use Anne-Marie Designs co.uk www.annemariedesignsco.uk it's 260 gsm and it is superb quality and very very reasonable thank you very much ladies take care bye bye <coughs>